I'm Robin Wong. I am so glad you're here joining me today. We've been letting people jump on and hopefully more will join us. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for taking this time. So I, I really want to thank you for being here. It's not easy to take time out of your busy schedules to focus on your health and to learn about nutrition. And I am so passionate about nutrition. So um, I'm, I'm excited to be here. And I thank you, ACC, for letting me have this venue and this moment to share this with you. So let me know, what is your motivation for being here? You know, do you love to learn, okay? Or are you just curious about plant-based nutrition? So many people are hearing about it these days, right? You're seeing it everywhere. Um, are you worried about your health? Um, or you want to reduce the number of medications you might be on, or, you, or maybe you have a loved one that you're worried about. So if you are willing to share, go ahead and unmute and give me a, few, a little bit of feedback so I know who I'm speaking to. I want this to be somewhat interactive. I want to get to know you and find out a ways that I can possibly help you um, as we go before we start the presentation. And it'll also help me set up my future presentations, right, if I know kind of what you're interested in. So just let me know, are you just here to learn? Or are you just curious? Are you just curious about what the heck is plant-based nutrition? So they're gonna let me know if I have anybody there? Uh, huh? Okay. All right, be a brave, be someone, be brave. No, okay, if not, that's all right, we'll move on. And maybe as we go through the uh, process, you'll want to jump on and share something with me. So let me tell you, maybe you don't even know, what we're going to learn today. Um, we're going to look at the standard American, American diet, kind of how we are taught to eat and how many of us can, have been eating. And then we're going to look at really how food and, um, can help you change your health outcome, how they're related, and then what is... WFPB, that's the acronym for Whole Foods Plant-Based, and you might see that acronym, you might see plant-based on food products. And then we're, I'm going to give you six steps to really improve your health, okay? So that is what, where we're going with this presentation. And I wanted to jump in really quick and just talk about uh, kind of the depressing stuff. The chronic diet-related disease, kind of give you some numbers, all right? So... Poor diet is responsible in the U.S. for about 10.9 million deaths. It's a lot. So that just shows you right there that diet is super related to our health, right? And so that was a 2017 statistic. I'm sure it's increased th since then. And what do I mean when I say chronic diet-related disease? Well, I'm referring to heart disease, to type 2 diabetes, um, cancer, and everything that goes with that, like high cholesterol or high blood pressure, okay, those are all things that are related to your diet, what we eat every day. And a lot of these diseases that we see in the U.S. are not even diseases that are seen in other countries just because of our diet. And so that's why we're going to look at ways you can tweak your diet to maybe improve your health. So cost of poor eating habits. What is it? It's like $50 billion a year in healthcare costs, and that's heart disease and stroke and type 2 diabetes. But more importantly, what is the cost to your quality of life? You know, um, your doctor's appointments, having to take medications, going to the pharmacy, having to take those medications with you everywhere you go, especially if have, you have type 2 diabetes. Are you having to check your blood sugars every day? I mean, I hope you are monitoring for sure. And then always making sure you're eating foods that are conducive to blood sugars, right? And so, you know, the cost of quality of life, there's really not a price you can put on that. And so that's why I really want you to look at it. It's like, is your health impacting your daily life, okay? And then we're going to look throughout this program as to how you can make changes in your diet to improve that quality of life, maybe lessen those medications and those symptoms, all right? So, and that's where I come to. There is good news, okay? There is great news. Lifestyle changes can improve your health. Isn't that great news? I mean, when I just, and it doesn't have to be huge. Small steps do count, 
all right? The key is to do something, to take a step on that road to changing, okay? So, okay, I, I guess I should jump in right here and introduce myself. Um, I, again, I'm Robin. I'm, uh, I, my credentials are I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist. I specialize in type 2 diabetes. Um, I really focus on plant-based nutrition, but I really meet my clients where they are because I know everybody has different lifestyles and they want to practice plant-based nutrition at different levels. Um, I did get a master's degree in nutrition education, and you know I went back to school at the age of 56. So this has been a more a more recent thing, and believe me, people thought I was the teacher for sure rather than the student. But you know, I did my research down in Fiji, where I studied um, women and diabetes, and so and my my research was published. So, on a more personal note, um, I'm a mom of four grown children. I have two boys and two girls. Uh, I live on a vineyard down in Clarksburg, so some of you might be familiar where that is. And you know, I love doing Pilates in addition to Joaquin's yoga class here at ACC, another great service they provide, right? And um, you know, I love being outside. And so, uh, you know, I, I love growing lavender. And kind of an odd fact is I know an unusual amount about honeybees because I grew up in a family of beekeepers, okay? So um, this kind of an odd thing. So anyway, I just thought I'd throw that in there. So moving forward, how did I get to where I am? 11 years ago, my husband um, was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. And the advice he received was to eat healthy, keep your weight stable, exercise, and take medications. The, the kicker was we did eat healthy. We, he was not overweight. We did exercise, and he didn't want to take the medications, right? So it's like, okay, what do we have left to do there? And so, you know, we were already eating our healthy diet, because he did come from a family of, with heart disease. And so we were focused on that. And you know, it left us, where do we go? Where do we go with that? So what it left us with is a path, right? A path of figuring out um, the, you know, this quest for no medicine. We wanted to really reduce the amount of medications because we knew with diabetes, it was a progressive disease. And so you start on one medication, and then maybe you're taking two medications, and 10, 12 years in, where he is now, he might have been up to three medications and possibly insulin. So we wanted to prolong that as long as possible. So this quest to not go on medication 11 years ago really led to this new approach to eating for us. We redefined uh, healthy, okay, uh, you know, from what we were doing. And so we started making lifestyle changes because we know stress and sleep impact your health as well. And it led to me finding a new career. It actually led to me being here in front of you right now uh, because it drove me back to school. And because this quest, I learned so much and I knew I could impact people's health by sharing with them what I knew about diet and, and disease. And so that set me on a whole new path. And Diabetes was actually not a, a bad thing. It actually created um, this awareness around um, health and diet that really launched my, uh, us into a healthier way of living, and that provided me to offer that to my family as well. So our four kids, actually, who probably will have a genetic predisposition to disease, um, will already start these healthier habits at an earlier age, okay? So that is really crucial. All right, so the next thing we have is, you know, what I found. What I found on that quest, on that journey, following that map, was our healthy way of eating wasn't keeping us healthy. It really wasn't, especially my husband. He wasn't overweight, he, you know, was exercising, we were eating, and he got diabetes. So then you're like, ah, oh, must be genetic. But what we found is that no, it was just really our version of healthy wasn't necessarily completely healthy, okay? And that's what I want you to even look at what you're doing. If you're doing all the things that are healthy um, and you're still having to take more medication or you're still carrying some extra weight or you're maybe not, your LDL, your cholesterol is not as low as you want, we need to revisit that version of healthy 
Because what we found is we were still consuming um, the healthier version of the standard American diet, okay? And so we had switched. We had switched from red meat to chicken, okay? But what that meant was we didn't actually um, lower our saturated fat intake. We just switched how we were getting it, right? We were um, eating less, but we were still eating it. We had switched from you know, dairy products to, to, non, to, to low fat dairy. We had, um, and then I came to find out there was a lot of hidden dairy and hidden oils that I should have been aware of. So on this journey, um, I just started putting all these pieces together. And it was literally these pieces that have enabled me um, to put them all together to then bring this to people, other people, so that they could save the steps they could honestly um, in, you know, do what I did only faster, okay? So I found a new version of healthy, right? And so how many of you have heard about plant-based nutrition? I don't know if we can do a show of hands somehow. Uh, you know, have you heard about it? It's kind of the rage right now. So many people are, are talking about it. And you're, uh, I, did I see a hand? Is that Virginia? Yeah, okay, so you've heard about it. That's awesome. Um, and oh, another one. I, I see some hands going up. That's awesome. Thank you for, for showing me that. So y you are aware of it and you are probably curious about it. Oh, I get a thumbs up. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. So really the plant-based nutrition, it's consuming minimally processed fruit, you know, fruits and vegetables, whole grains, legumes, you know, rice, I mean, um, beans, tofu, um, peas and lentils for your proteins, um, nuts and seeds, herbs and spices. That's kind of the definition you probably have seen. Plus, those foods are super high on fiber and they're high in antioxidants and vitamins and minerals. But what they're lacking is the, they're low in saturated fats and the added oils and the salt and sugar. And that's where their health promoting properties come, okay, when you consume those. Because you're, avoid, you're getting all this good stuff, but you're avoiding all these other things. So how does eating plants on a plant-based diet, and you're eating more than just plants, okay, help you? Well, you're, you're gonna lower your rates of obesity. You're gonna have, you know, lower your risk of diabetes, type two diabetes and heart disease. You're gonna, you know, lower your risk of cancer. There's gonna be less inflammation in your body. And you're really gonna build that strong immune system that is super crucial, um, A, as we age, and especially um, at this time of what we're going through in the world, right? You want a strong immune system. You want to give your body the best chance it can to be healthy and fight off germs and, and heal if you are having um, any sort of um, you know, sickness. So that's where we're going with this. We're going to talk about plant-based nutrition. So now you know how it helps you. Let's give you a little overview. Like I said, it's legumes. What are those? All right, they're chickpeas, also known as garbanzo beans, right? They're other types of beans, um, kidney beans, black beans, fava beans, um, any sort of bean. Uh, peas and lentils. Lentils are, are my secret weapon. They cook super fast and they're super delicious and they uh, bring so much protein with them. You know, these are what provide the, the protein for your body and the essential amino acids that so many people worry about. They often worry about getting enough protein. You don't have to worry about that if you're eating, um, you know, legumes. Uh, leafy greens and cruciferous vegetables. Those leafy greens are really great for calcium and other nutrients, okay? Plus, they, they fill you up. All these things are high in fiber, so you feel full. Um, whole grains. Often, um, if you are diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, you're really um, carb sensitive. You're shy of that. And I'm, we're talking about whole grains. So, um, you know, and those bring amino acids as well and iron and zinc. So you don't want to avoid them altogether. You might need to swap them out. Maybe instead of the white rice, we're doing brown rice. Maybe you're going to throw in some quinoa, okay? There's ways to do this, and we will talk about that. Um, nuts and seeds, okay. Oh, okay. I have a question. So I didn't see it until this now. So hi, Flora. Um, vegetables in your diet as lentils, peas. Okay, you want to expand your range of vegetables, okay. And, and your vegetables and your lentils are your, your protein foods. So other protein-rich vegetables. I see. Okay. 
Um, you know, my favorite protein one is edaname. It's a great um, snack food, okay? Uh, and it's, you can keep them in the freezer, and they're just, uh, you know, I love them. They're super high in protein. And then you also have your tofu, which I think people overlook a lot. And so, um, and just know that even vegetables have small amounts of protein in them. They do, okay? Not in the same level that your legumes do, but as you start eating this way, what you realize is the standard American diet is super focused on protein and protein heavier more than you even need, okay? So, you know, we eat probably double the amount of protein we need in a day, and we eat half the amount of fiber we need in a day. So when people ask me, when I tell them I'm plant-based, and they'll say, oh, how do you get your protein? I kind of want to say, oh, how do you get your fiber? Because I know if they're eating um, the standard American diet, they're not getting their quota of fiber every day, okay? And so you should be eating roughly 30 grams of fiber a day, and you're eating, most Americans are eating about 15. So, all right, nuts and seeds, those are your healthy fats, okay? And then a variety of fruits and veggies. And so I say variety, I want you to think about eating the rainbow, okay? This is what I, when I teach kids, eating the rainbow. And so you want to mix it up because as you're eating different foods, you are getting um, different nutrients, okay, with that. So how I cook is I look at my pan, I'm like, oh, it needs some more color. And I throw in a handful of spinach and maybe a red bell pepper, and I, I go for really colorful, right? And that not only is it visually appealing to your eye and exciting, it's really good for all your nutrient contents as well. Okay, so I wanted to talk to you about some things you can do, and I tried to break it down into six steps for you for just better health, okay? So step one is to really affect chronic diet-related disease is you need to reduce your saturated fats. And your saturated fats are found in the animal products, okay? That is your um, meat, that is your dairy, Okay, that is your eggs. Now, does that mean you can never have that again? No. But what I want you to start looking at is maybe you can just start um, eating less. Maybe it's going to be, I'm going to eat um, a smaller piece of um, fish and add some beans with that, okay? Or maybe you're going to add more leafy greens to, to make up that difference. And so you're going to change how your plate looks. And um, at the end, uh, we're going to put in the chat box a download you can have that will show you sort of what, what a plate will look like, okay? Of you know, how you can start making you know, your plate mimic that, that healthier version of, um, okay? So the second step is, is really to avoid added oils. And, you know, added oils are really sneaky, okay? So this is where you're gonna wanna read your labels and you're gonna start looking what is in my food. And so when you read a label, you can see where it says saturated fat and other, other fats, okay? You want to really see how much oil is in that dish. And, you know, for example, I was so excited when um, a couple years ago I walked into the grocery store and they're like, year of the plant-based eating. I was like, oh, it's finally happening. It's here. And they had a whole table of display, but it wasn't fresh fruits and vegetables. It was kale chips, it was um, granola bars, it was all, a lot of processed foods, and that's the step three. And so what I know, those kale chips, if I made them myself with no added oils, they would have been great, okay? But because it's processed in a, in a bag, it's gonna be high in added oils, okay? So yeah, you, you'd be better off just eating the kale, um, and they're not bad for a snack occasionally, but it, the second best would be to make them yourself so then you can control how much oil it goes into. And they'd probably, they're higher in salt as well. So anytime you have, so step three is processed foods. Anytime you have a processed food, it's gonna be typically higher in salt, higher in fat, and sometimes higher in sugar, okay? So just, just know that. So processed foods is step three, and I'll go into these a little bit more in the next slides, but step four is don't drink your calories, okay? So, so often, um, especially for those trying to lose weight or kind of watch their weight, they don't even think of the calorie content behind um, their beverages. 
And you know, that's the fancy drinks and the juice and all these things. Okay, we'll get into that. Step five is to replace or substitute um, your favorite recipes. Because if you're able to do that, and you're gonna really be able to make those changes stick. Okay, it's not, it's not gonna be just a diet. And, and when I say diet, I say plant-based diet, but it's not a diet, it's a lifestyle. Okay, diet in a, in a dietitian's world is a pattern of eating, and that's how I refer to it. I don't refer to diet as a verb, okay? Does that make sense? So, and then step six is to eat more, not less. Who doesn't like that, right? So let's jump into step one a little bit more. And I did kind of di you know, talk about that a little bit already. There we go. So step one is reduce fats. What does that look like? Um, legumes, peas, lentils, tofu is gonna <clears throat> replace or um, subsidize kind of, you know, maybe oh, a little bit less, um, you know, a little bit less meat and a little bit more legumes, or maybe you add some tofu to that, all right? You can start looking at your recipes and you can say, oh, it calls for a pound of ground beef. Maybe you can go to lean meat on that and then cut it in half, okay? There's ways to do it um, that will still, those that small steps I'm talking about. Okay, and then the saturated fats that you find in dairy. This is the ones that they're pretty sneaky. Dairy sneaks in in, in ways of butter, sour cream, half and half, cream, um, yogurt, uh, and uh, you know, a, a ice cream. Okay, there's, it's, it's, it's pretty sneaky. When you start reading your labels, it comes in on, under different terms. It's not just listed as dairy, it's whey, it's casein proteins, it's, it's a lot of different terms. So, Look at your allergen label on the back, and if it says milk, it means there's dairy in there. And then if you look, it'll probably say there's some saturated fat, okay? So just start paying attention to that saturated fat um, on your labels. And then the next thing is eggs. So there's fats in eggs, along with a lot of cholesterol, okay? And I know there, there's studies that now say cholesterol's okay, eggs are okay, and they're sponsored by the egg board, okay? Just so you know. Uh, and so if you love eggs, just be aware of how many you're eating, all right? And maybe eat them once a week instead of every day, okay? And maybe add in some oatmeal and breakfast there. So, um, but there's ways to do it. You can actually make a delicious um, uh, um, tofu scramble. You can also, to insert with no eggs, you can also make pancakes with no eggs. You can use a flax egg. You can also make um, a... Um, an, an omelet with chickpea flour, oddly enough, it is super, and you put a bunch of vegetables in it. There's so many things we can do, and we will sh I will be showing you those in future lessons, okay? So I'm going to be with you for four weeks now, three more weeks after this. So we'll be doing those in future um, episodes as well, okay? So, step, uh, so let's talk about the standard American diet when we talk about saturated fat. It brings nothing with it really. Okay, it does taste good, all right, because that's what we're used to but it's high in fat and cholesterol. And so if you're having issues with your cholesterol, it's, it's probably because you're getting it from your diet. It's the dietary cholesterol. You know, um, you do need cholesterol in your diet, but your liver makes all it needs, okay? So anything uh, uh, you know, above that is actually um, you know, from what you eat, okay? And just know that, oh, you're right. You might be saying, but Robin, I only eat one egg a week. But meat and dairy that have saturated fat, they go hand in hand, okay, with cholesterol. Those two are married. Saturated fat and cholesterol go together, okay? So just know that. Um, the standard American diet is high in salt. So if you have high blood pressure, we want you watching your salt, right? Um, and it's literally two teaspoons a day, okay? It's not much. And if you're eating thing, anything processed in a package, it's probably, or tea or frozen food, you know, dinners or anything, it's probably higher than that because they use salt for processing. And then high in sugar, okay? So that's what the standard American diet, what we've all been raised on, pretty much eats and that's what we get. And what we're missing is those foods are really low in fiber. So, um, you know, animal products, you know, dairy and meat and eggs have zero fiber in them. And fiber is your friend especially if you are trying to lose weight even because it fills you up, especially if you are worried about colon cancer because fiber keeps everything moving, moving through, okay? 
And especially if you have diabetes, type 2 diabetes, it helps you keep your blood sugar stable. Okay? So just know that that is definitely your friend. Fiber is. Okay. So we also have um, step two was to avoid added oils. Okay? Oil only brings calories. Okay? Again, fat, and, and like in oils, has nine calories per gram compared to four calories per gram that proteins and carbohydrates bring, okay? So that's double. So when you d eat anything with oil, you're getting a, a pretty big dose of calories and nothing else. It doesn't really bring flavor. It doesn't really, it doesn't bring any fiber. It doesn't have any antioxidants. Like I said, no vitamins, minerals, or other healthful nutrients, okay? But yet we're really conditioned to be using it, right? And so, so we do. Okay, and I know that olive oil has been like the rage and uh, because of the Mediterranean diet, but I've got to tell you, the Mediterranean diet, as we took olive oil out of that and then blew it up, in Mediterranean, you know, or in those countries that eat that diet, it's a small part of it. They eat a lot more vegetables. They eat very le you know, a lot less meat. They move their bodies a whole bunch more. And they also, you know... Um, you know, they just, they have a very different lifestyle than we have for the most part. And like I said, olive oil is a small part of that, you know. So just know that, okay, that, that is just a small part. Um, you know, the hidden oils, and they sneak in. When we saute, we take, you know, those great vegetables and we saute them in oil. You've just now taken a very low calorie food and added a whole bunch of calories to it, okay. The saving grace is you do have fiber with the vegetables, but, you know, I, I will show you a way in the future weeks of how to cook without, with how to saute without oil, okay? You can use um, veggie broth or water. Uh, salad dressings are a huge culprit for um, hidden oil, okay? And you can actually thicken salad oil with chia seeds, and then you get omega-3s, too. It's pretty awesome. And then your fried foods, okay? Those are a big culprit, all right? So just those are ways that you know, those fats get into our diets that we don't even think about, all right? So just keep that in mind. So I'm going to move forward. I, what I want you to know about oils, too, is even though you um, think that the new rage right now is avocado oil, right, along with olive oil, those oils, even though they're, they're marketed as being, um, you know, better for you and low in saturated fat, they still have some saturated fat with them, okay? It's a lower percentage. In fact, olive oil has 14%, all right? But, you know, it's still saturated fat. So if you're confused as to how are my numbers high, you know, it might be that that's sneaking into your diet somehow, okay? Because you've been taught that olive oil is a better option, Right? And so I just, you know, it certainly is. The polyunsaturated, the monounsaturated are better options than using lard or butter, okay? But they still have saturated fats. So the canola oil is one of the lowest. So if you have to um, use oil, you just miss it so much and you want to saute your vegetables in a little bit of oil, it is, it is a better option. So it falls, it is better than olive. But that's the percentage of saturated fat it still has, okay? So yes, it's better than, you know, um, some of the others, but you're still getting it, all right? So just know that. And I do not know why the coconut oil rage has happened. One of my cardiologist friends tells me, he goes, yeah, I wish people would just rub it on their skin instead of ingesting it, right? So if you're going to use coconut oil, use it on the outside, not on the inside, because it's super high in saturated fat. It's the one, well, along with palm oil, there's two plant products that actually are high in saturated fats. They're kind of an anomaly, you know? And so just know that coconut oil um, is not really your friend, okay? Uh, not long ago, I was um, grocery shopping, and I had a man stop me in the, in the aisle, because I, I had a cauliflower, and he had a cauliflower, and he says, you know, I've never cooked this cauliflower before. He goes, but I see you have one. How are you going to cook it? So I said, well, how are you going to cook it? And he goes, well, I'm going to put a little uh, coconut oil. I'm like, oh, well, can I encourage you to not do that? And he goes, sure. And so I never know what happened. But just so you know, you take this perfectly good vegetable, 
and then you add all the saturated fat to it, okay? So I want you to avoid doing that, okay? So if you take nothing away, else away from this, get rid of your coconut oil, okay? Uh, step three is the, uh, avoid processed foods, and here they all are. And I know if you're cooking for yourself, sometimes those fr frozen foods are pretty attractive, right? And so just read your labels. On occasion, they're not, they're not too bad, but start reading your labels and seeing where the saturated fat is and the added oils, okay? And so these are some of the processed foods. And honestly, when I was doing my research in Fiji, um, they typically had had a, a really great diet for a long time until they started importing Western foods, and it was all the processed foods. And then we saw their, their diabetes numbers skyrocket, and it's a, it's a really big problem there. And so our Western diet is infiltrating the rest of the world, unfortunately, and we're starting to see the same health issues we're having here there. And so um, just know that. Okay, so let's see. Next slide is, okay, one simple rule. I tried to make it simple for you. If it came from a plant, eat it. If it's made in a plant, don't. And that's a Michael Pollan. Uh, I listened to him at lecture many years ago, and that was sort of his advice. And really, it's pretty good advice, right? Um, it's, we're talking about more whole foods. So the processing that happens removes the fiber and vitamins. In fact, if you eat um, a, a fortified and enriched food, often they've stripped everything away and put it back in. Okay, because they've processed it and then they add the stuff back in. So just know that processing often takes away a lot of the fiber. That's why I want you, when you're choosing bread or your, or your grains, look for the whole, whole grain on the, the first label, on your label. Or look at the brown rice, because there's less processing there. Even with oats, if you're eating oatmeal, the you know, one-minute oats, they're more processed than the five-minute oats because... It's basically, the processing is doing the job of what your stomach's gonna do. Once you eat it, it's gonna take a while to grind up and do all that, and they just, to save cooking time, they do it for you. And so just know that that's, one of the, that's processing. And typically when they process, they add salt, fat, sugar, and salt, okay? So that's, um, if it comes in a package, you need to be read, reading your label, okay? So, uh, let's see. Step four was don't drink your calories, okay? And, you know, um, this is hard because it's, it's social sometimes to go meet for a coffee, and those co co uh, coffee drinks are very enticing. But they have a lot of saturated fat in them and a lot of calories, okay? And, and zero fiber. Remember, fiber is your friend, okay, with our health. And so, you know, just if you um, are struggling with, to lose weight, Kind of look at what you're drinking, all right, and see, um, you know, and just know that sometimes, um, even when you go to those juice, um, you know, bars, sometimes, you know, focus on the all um, fruit instead of having them add the dairy into it, all right? And certainly sodas, um, are they horrible, you know, on occasion? No, but it's like, but most people, they drink them more than just, you know, on occasion. And, um, you know, just know that that's not, that's not really helping your health. So this is why. Your body and brain don't really register that the body is full after drinking hundreds of calories because there's no fiber. And that's really what registers. It's that, um, so it registers that, oh, my stomach is filled up. It's this volume thing, right? And so when you drink your calories, it's not, it doesn't know how many calories you drank. It just knows that you're not full, okay? And so you're still hungry. So now you'll add something along with that, right? And so just know that, um, you know, that's kind of what's going on. If you can drink that big drink and not feel full, it's because there's no fiber in it and it doesn't register calories, it registers fullness. Um, you know, also, like I said, be beverages have little fiber and they're really, you know, there's a lot of hidden sugars. And they're bad for your teeth. That constant exposure of, you know, soda all day long. My husband's a dentist, okay? So he would say, if people want to drink soda, drink it. Have the one soda. Drink it down. And then go rinse out your mouth, okay, to save your teeth instead of this constant sipping all day long, okay? And, so, and that sugar's not great for your body, especially if you have diabetes. And so when choosing a drink, maybe go for the, you know, non-fat, you know, go for the plant milks in it. 
and get a smoothie with like all fruit juice um, and do that in moderation, okay? Okay, we are on step five, adapting your favorite recipes. So I want you to know that eating plant-based does not mean you're destined to eat salads and leafy greens the rest of your life. These are some of the foods that I eat all the time. I eat, you know, vegetarian chili uh, with a bunch of different beans, I, and I put it over quinoa sometimes, or rice, uh, brown rice. I eat spaghetti, I eat tacos and pot pie, and pot pie is one of our family favorites. My kids love it, and I had to adapt it. It was from my sister who did a chicken pot pie, and I'm like, oh, how am I gonna do that? And so the chicken's now replaced with lentils, and I add more vegetables, and there's just ways to do it. Um, cheesy potatoes, do I use real cheese? No, but can I get the flavor? Yes, I can. Um, tofu scramble. Okay, so these are some examples of the swaps you can make. And so you don't have to stop eating your favorite foods. We just um, veg them up, okay? We put more vegetables in them and we tweak them a little bit to, you know, it's foods you love that loves you back is really what it is. You want your food to love you back as well. Um, instead of causing disease, you want it to, you know, be health promoting, okay? So just know there's ways to do it. So, step six, eat more, right? That's pretty great, not less. And, you know, it, because you're eating nutritionally dense foods in the plant-based diet, you can eat more. They're lower in calorie, they're higher in fiber. Years ago, 11 years when we went plant-based, all four kids lived at home. And my son was an avid soccer player, practicing a couple times a week. And, when, and my kids went plant-based with us, and he was like, I'm just starving all the time. And this was a bad parenting moment. I was like, well, you know, I'm sending you all this food, but what I realized, he needed to eat more. I was sending him our regular volume, which he used to eat, but now it's so lower in calories and, and oils that he just needed to eat, like, I'd send him on the grocery sack is what his lunch would be in. So you can eat more. And I have clients all the time tell me, how can I eat this much and lose weight? It's like, I know, isn't it wonderful? So just know when you're eating a plant-based diet, there's no portion control, there's no deprivation. Um, you can eat until satisfied and still maintain your weight. And you honestly have more energy, no more brain fog, because you're not eating the fats and oils, okay? So there's not this lethargic feeling. It's, it's pretty amazing, um, uh, uh, the transition that happens. So I want you to know, this is what calorie density looks like. So when you eat oils, these are, this is a picture of your stomach, okay? I'm not sure if you knew that, but it's a picture of your stomach. And I want you to know that <clears throat> this is what 500 calories looks like. So oil, you don't even see anything. If you eat a bunch of 500 calories of cheese, that adds up pretty quickly. Your stomach's not full. Then you have meat. But then you start adding potatoes and beans and rice, and then you add your fruits and veggies. And so you get really filled up, and you you've only eaten 500 calories, okay? So just know that this is, you know, this is how you can eat so much more. And I, like I said, you're eating delicious food. And, and you know, you, if you're eating a little bit of meat and more veggies, you're gonna get there. I mean, it's, you're still gonna enjoy your food. And I'm a firm believer in food should be enjoyed and eating should be enjoyable, okay? So just know that. So, in conclusion, um, I, I just want you to walk away from this and kind of I'm setting the groundwork for our future sessions, is I want you to know that diet does impact your health. It's like an 80-20 thing, okay? So many people have told me, I just need to exercise more. Exercise is wonderful, and yes, I am a proponent of that, but that's 20% of the equation. Dietary change is 80% of the equation. That's where you see your really a big impact on your health, okay? Um, you know, I've had clients in four months of going plant-based lower their cholesterol levels to normal, okay? Four months. And so it can help in cause. I've had blood sugars come down super fast from 289 to 139 in eight days. I mean, it's, it's amazing when you take this on, okay? So just know plant-based foods can reduce the risk of chronic you know, diet-related disease. It is, there are so many studies that are showing that, and that's why more and more people are jumping on the bandwagon because it, it does help, okay? 
Um, and just know that plant-based is focusing on not just leafy greens. It's your, le it's your legumes. It's your whole grains. It's your fruits and veggies and nuts and seeds. It's, it's a really enjoyable lifestyle. It is. And we really want to just avoid those added oils as well, okay? And that's the sneaky things, the processed foods. It's called whole foods plant-based because there's little processing, okay? Remember our six steps. Replace the saturated fats. And you can start this today. You can, at your next meal, go, hmm, maybe I'll cut my meat in half, okay? And the added oils. Maybe I won't saute in, in oil tonight, my veggies. Um, avoid your processed foods. Uh, don't drink your calories. Adapt your favorite recipe. Start looking at the recipes that you might be able to, to tweak and adapt, adapt a little bit. And then remember, once you start this way, you can start eating more and not less, okay? So... I'm not going to say it's going to be easy. Change can be challenging. It can be. But your health is worth it. I want this for you. I want you to improve your health. I'm sure you want to improve your health. You have family and friends that count on you being here. And you want to feel good and do the things you love. So just know that even though it's challenging, it's really well worth it. It really is. So I look forward to um, our future sessions together. And if you drop me some chat and let me know kind of what you're interested in, I can tailor the next sessions to include some of that information. And I would love to open it up to questions, and I will do my best to answer your questions on the time I have. And so just let me know. And so I guess how we do this is you unmute yourself and fire away if you have anything. Okay. I know, I know. So Sharon, the Mediterranean diet, it does emphasize the use of olive oil. And so I would say, yes. Well, it, here's, the th here's the caveat. If you are, um, have any sort of risk factor uh, that, let's say maybe um, you have high cholesterol or you have heart disease or you have diabetes, okay, type 2 diabetes, I would say limit the use. Because um, with di type 2 diabetes, we know there is a strong correlation between saturated fat. And remember, olive oil has some saturated fat, saturated fat and insulin resistance, OK? And, and so when you go to that root cause of working on your insulin resistance, then your numbers come down, OK? And so the, the fats, um, I think what happens with the, in the US with olive oil is we are kind of more is better type attitude. And so if a little's good, we, a lot must be better, right? <laughs> and so, so we tend to overuse it. Now, if you're using it to saute your vegetables, a tablespoon here and there, and you enjoy that, I'm not going to say stop. But do you have to consciously try to get it into your diet for health? I would say my opinion is no. My opinion is so. Does that answer your question? I hope it does. OK. Uh, so any other questions? OK. We're, we're coming up. This is it's happening. I'm so glad you all are here. It's so great to have you here. Oh, okay. A good substitute for coconut oil in baked goods. Okay. Okay, so you know coconut oil is... Um, I don't really use it, but uh, what I do know, because I wanted to play with it a little bit, is it's, it's like lard, right? It's, it's hard. And so I would say if you want to substitute that, uh, you would almost be better off using butter, oddly enough, okay? Butter actually has less saturated fat in it than coconut oil. And so, uh, and you might, take your baked good and see if you could, um, because here's the deal. With vegan cooking, if you're Googling vegan uh, muffins, okay, and maybe that's what you're using this for, I don't know, often they'll use coconut oil with it because it is vegan. The, the, the difference between vegan and plant-based is there's a different motivation. Sometimes if you're vegan, you're worried about the animal wel wel welfare and you're not as focused on your health. With plant-based, we're more focused on the health and where those oils and how those oils are and fats are impacting our health. So maybe try um, Googling plant-based muffin or no oil muffin 
uh, and see, or whatever the food is, and see what comes up, okay? And see, because I, you know, I will try to find something, and then they will make it in the kitchen, because that would be kind of fun, you know, honestly. And so um, let me get on that, because I don't use coconut oil, so I'm not, a, I don't know what a great substitute would be. Like when I we substitute out um, other oils, I use applesauce, you know, for oil, like in a cake mix or other products. I mean, they're kind of the same consistency, so that's what I use. But I'm, I don't really know for coconut oil, so... Sorry, I don't have a better answer for you, but I will look it up for you. I will. Okay. Any other questions? No? Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope to see you um, back next week, and we're going to do a little cooking demo. I'm going to look for a recipe on, uh, you know, replacing coconut oils in, in baked goods, and uh, we will talk more about how to cook without oil, okay? And I hope to see you all here. Thank you. And thank you again, ACC, for having us here and bringing us all together. What a great service. Um, and I was so thrilled to be able to spend this time with you. Thank you so much.